the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Together, reducing fraud worldwide. Hi, my name is Richard Bistrong. Uh, I was convicted uh, in 2010 where I formally pleaded guilty to violating the FCPA, including its books and records provision. Now, my conduct came to the attention of the U.S. Justice Department in 2007, which led to three years of undercover cooperation with the FBI, including covert cooperation with the City of London Police. When that covert cooperation finished, I then spent another two years in trial preparation and in testimony as a government witness. And my plea bargain was formally opened in U.S. court. When all that was finished, as part of my plea agreement, I was then sentenced. I was facing five years of imprisonment, but due to my cooperation, the, the judge sentenced me to 18 months of imprisonment of which I served 14 and a half months, and I was released in December of 2013. I'm often asked, between the University of Virginia and prison, where did it all start? And I talk about a place called Tierra del Fuego. It's at the bottom of Argentina. It's the southernmost habitable city on Earth, less than 600 miles from Antarctica. And I'm there visiting with my agent, also known as a third party, an intermediary, a fixer. No indication of corruption or corrupt intent on any of the contracts that we successfully completed. And we had a big one coming up in a few months. And during a lunch, he shares with me that as part of his success and his success fee, that he's paying tolls to win tenders. Now, maybe it's because I grew up in New York City, but I knew what he meant by tolls. And in my 15 years in the field, I've heard a lot of interesting and colorful and descriptive words to describe foreign bribery, making people happy, taking care of, having special marketing information. The one that I never heard was bribe. So he's sharing with me that He's intertwining legitimate and corrupt business services. This is not a bag man. He was doing legitimate work for the company as well, but he's also paying tolls. And the interesting part of that conversation is he didn't ask me for anything. He didn't say there are a lot of toll takers and we need to up his commission rate or his success fee or that the tolls were going up. He just shared this was his winning strategy. And what did I do? I nodded my head. And months later, he won that big contract, and I instructed people in the finance division to wire his success fee, knowing that a part of that fee was going to pay a public official. That's when I started violating the FCPA. Now, I certainly know if I called my company they would have told me to get home, unwind the transaction, and unwind the relationship with the intermediary. But what I thought is, this is only a red flag if I make it one. Sitting there looking out at the Antarctic tundra, I wasn't thinking I was in the earshot of international law enforcement or compliance. And I'm thinking, why make a disturbance here? This is only a problem if I make it one. So sadly, I took that compliance decision into my own hands. I wasn't thinking about the ethical consequences of those decisions, not upon society, how corruption destroys governance and human rights, not upon my company, on how they could be damaged both economically and their reputation, and sadly, not on my family. I didn't share that debate with anyone else but myself.